Hey guys, welcome to 2022. Man, we're sitting here, we're gonna talk where to start. I got three great lakes picked out here today. Uh, as always, just like we did all last year, we're gonna give a battery away. You know, that's a great, great value to you as a, as a viewer to be a part of the channel. All you gotta do is just leave me a comment, be a subscriber, and randomly each month we pick a, a winner and we mail you a certificate for a battery. So don't forget to do that uh, sometime throughout this video. So let's get started. The first lake I, I wanna talk about is Lake Seminole. My good buddy, Carl Slaughter, man, he mentions it every month in my comments. Uh, Lake Seminole, please, Lake Seminole, please. So here we are, we are going to do Lake Seminole. We'll start off with it. And I'm gonna kind of take this a couple different ways. I, I wanna talk about, you know, January fishing on Lake Seminole, but then we're gonna venture off a little bit into some areas where I think they will start to go come February and March when that spawn really starts to kick off. But uh, you know, if, if we were to start, let's just start here on the C map. For me in January, anywhere we go across the country, guys, you know, this just doesn't pertain to Lake Seminole. This could be right here in Oklahoma. It could be um, in Texas. It could be anywhere you're fishing across the country, you know, other than the ice for you guys up north, I'm sorry. I wanna find the cleanest, clearest water. When it's as cold as it's gonna be, find the cleanest, clearest water, the most stable water that you can find in your body of water. And for me on Lake Seminole, you know, you know that Chattahoochee River at times can be great, but a lot of times that thing can be a lot of, a lot of dirt rolling down that thing, a lot of mud, depending on how much rain you've got. So, you know, if, if I was to go there not getting any practice, not having any knowledge of what's going on, you know, to me, the most stable conditions always on Lake Seminole is going to be in that spring creek. Thus the name spring. It probably has a lot of springs feeding it. It's always generally very clean, very clear. And, you know, another thing that I always think about anytime I'm fishing is grass. You know, the more grass I can find, I just grass and bass rhyme. We always say it. I think they, they rhyme for a reason. I would start my search in Spring Creek. So, you know, when you look at the map here of, of Seminole, you've got the Flint River coming down this direction. You've got the Chattahoochee River, which comes out of Lake Eufaula this direction. And then this is Spring Creek right here. And it's just, a, a, you can, when I, you know, another thing we always talk about a place to start, and this is a massive place to start, but you talk about spawning flats. So all this red is all shallow, shallow, you know, one to, to seven feet spawning type flats, all this stuff. So think about how many bass could live in those flats and spawn. Uh, thus, you know, they're not gonna be up there spawning right now. So they're just gonna be out in these channels. And this here, all this blue is the Spring Creek channel. And so I would start zooming in on that. And when I start looking at it and I look at it closer, you know, I look at these outside creek bends. You know, I see the creek bend coming up to a, a hump right here. Um, I see where these contour lines come in close together. You know, this, this nice little bend right here. Now there's gonna be a lot of standing timber in this that uh, is also gonna be a factor that you're gonna have to think into. You know, a really neat little bend, you know, right there you can see it makes a bend, another creek coming in. If you go on up Spring Creek a little bit, you know, I kind of like this area here. It just necks down then opens up. You got a couple really tight neck downs that I like. You got a couple ditches here that, you know, they could hem shad up in this ditch right here. They could hem shad up in that ditch right there. Uh, you know, it just depends on what your grass situation is. You've got a hump right here, a hump right here on those outside bends that could be just really, really good. You know, I would get in those areas that I just mentioned right there, and I'd be looking with my forward looking sonar if I had one. If I didn't, I'd be looking at that timber, you know, possibly pitching a, a, a drop shot or a worm or a jig down that timber. Uh, you know, another thing that I would do is, is throw like a belly weighted swim bait or an Alabama rig out on that creek channel. If we looked at Google Earth, and let's just start here with a current photo just to get everybody lined up with this. So here we are, this is Spring Creek. You can see all this grass. This is that neck down, and this is that channel. That channel comes down through here and it bends out and bends around. This is that ditch that I was just talking about, you know, that that those fish could just hem shad right up in this ditch right here. This was the other one that I was talking about. It just, it's a, it's a neat little, you know, you can see it perfectly here on, on, on Google Earth, you know, where that grass is. Just kind of a neat little deal right there. You know, a couple other things that I would keep in mind 
on places to start. You know, here I, we just mentioned two ditches right there. We mentioned those outside bins. Let's go go back and find a different photo here. You can also see you've got a boat lane, and you know anywhere you have those boat lanes and the timber, they make you know it's it's also makes an intersection in those boat lanes. So like you know I know from my experience like on Toledo Bend in the fall. You know those boat lanes and where they intersect the river you know there's going to be a timber line right there and fish really relate to those old timber lines it's just a a, a fact they just really really do um, here's a photo with the lake it looks like really really low so you can see that that ditch right there you can see how all these flats are laying in here uh, you know a couple other things to think about as the water warms up let's say you know it happens every year in the spring and you know you'll have this big warm water rush you know and those fish are going to come out of this creek and they're going to move up on this flat and they're going to start spawning well bam then you have a cold front well you've got a couple depressions in this flat you can see one right here you can see one right here these depressions are actually really really deep there's another one right there you know some of those things may be well over 10 15 20 feet deep that's going to be a place after that monster cold front to pull all those fish back into a depression. I can tell you a tournament, um, you know, as part of my testimony, I, I had an event there one time in February and I was catching them all, you know, up on a flat, you know, all these fish were up on a flat and then we had a cold front. They pulled right back into this depression that was just a little bit deeper and they just hold up there, you know, I guess they just got warmer in there, you know, I think that's kind of why all those fish moved in there in that final day I caught like 24 pounds rocketed all the way up the uh, leaderboard just by fishing those little bit deeper depressions but that's something I would look for a little bit later in the year you know as those fish move up look for some of those deeper depressions if you have a big cold front that comes through there we are for a couple places to start at Lake Seminole I know there's it's a monster lake but you know you have to narrow it down you know, you can't cover the whole lake in a day. And for me, you know, this time of the year, I'm gonna get in that Spring Creek area. I'm gonna stay out there related to that, to that creek channel somewhere, paying attention to those outside bends, maybe into some of those deeper drains, uh, fishing that outside grass. Uh, uh, so keep those things in mind. Use those to your lake wherever you are in, in whatever part of the country. Okay, the next lake that I wanna talk about was sent in by David Miller. I actually had, had, had quite a few people mention this lake, but Belton Lake. It's a really cool lake in Texas. So let's look at Belton Lake. This lake, you know, for you guys that, you know, maybe you're trying to relate this to your body of water, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a deep, clear, bluff-end lake. You know, it's got deep standing timber. Uh, it does have off-colored water up in the upper ends. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a really fairly common lake all across the country. You know, I feel like there's lakes in Tennessee like it. There's obviously lakes in Missouri and Oklahoma like it. Uh, some lakes down in Texas like it, but you know, doesn't have grass, um, fairly clean water, spotted bass, largemouth. I think it even has smallmouth in it. But uh, you know, when I look at it, let's just look at it right here. You know, and, and we're talking about January fishing. You can see here on my C map the colors. You know, this is all shallower water. It gets a lot deeper, steeper. All the contour lines again, shallow water. Um, I am going to focus you know, January fishing, I am gonna to try to focus in this section of the lake right here. And the reason is, this is gonna be a stable section of the lake, a cleaner section of the lake. It's not gonna have like, if, you know, a lot of times in, in, in the winter you have big winds. Well, if I was to fish this section of the lake, you know, one, it's gonna be dirtier, it's closer to the river. Two, it could get dirtier because it could get tore up by all the wind. So, you know, this section here, um, keep that in mind, like wherever you're at and, and you're trying to fish, and, and we talk a lot about fishing the cleanest, clearest water, and, and maybe you don't have the cleanest, clearest water on your lake, but you can find the, the best water by, by fishing areas of the lake that is least affected by the wind. And, and for this lake right here, it's this section. There's no big open areas of it. It's all real steep banks, thus meaning rock banks, and it's not gonna get really chalky from all the wind. So let's narrow it down just a little bit further. I'm zooming in here, you know, you got a big offshore hump right here. This would be something I would look at in June. Obviously there might be some fish out there in January, but for, that's not gonna be where I start. I really like how this main creek comes out. Um, and what I like about it is I've got some, some really good secondary points. 
Um, one thing that I always try to determine on any body of water, and you know, on belt, it may not be as so much as, as, as to say a, another lake that's got a lot of water flow, but out here in the main river stretch, the water temperature could be a, a degree or two different than say back in a creek. You know, still I've got deep, clear water on both sides, but if I've got a lot of water running out here, if you've had a big rain event, or if they draw a lot of water, generate a lot of current, um, you know, they can a lot of times think about that. Just see if there's a difference right off the main lake versus the main lake as far as water temperature. Um, and with that said, you know, I just, no matter what it is, I like these secondary points that are really steep right at the mouth of this creek. To me, it's just a, a really neat wintering area. You know, those fish can move very short distances to be in whatever water depth they want to be in. You know, they can just move right up on the bank and be shallow and just move a few feet and they're really, really deep. So when we look at this on Google Earth, you know, here, here are those secondary points. You know, you've got one right here, you've got one right here. If we zoom in a little bit more, maybe change the water level here a little bit with a different, different uh, water level. Uh, you can see there's a big rock right out here off this point. To me, that would be super cool spot. You know, just a big rock I think would hold more heat. You know, just it'd be something that those fish could relate to. Uh, you know, when you fill that thing up, there it is kind of filling up with water. There it is, it's out of sight. I just, I, I think that's unique. That's something different that's not on every one of these uh, bodies of water or every one of these points. You know, here you've got some big uh, broken chunk rock. Um, you know, it's going to transition to a little flat here in this bay. I just think it's a, a, it's a high percentage spot. You know, anytime I'm trying to find a place to start, I want it to be a high percentage spot. And there's no more high percentage spot than, than points. It just it, it is what it is. Um, if we were to look around a little bit more on this lake, I like this point right here too. Just because you've got this outside channel bend, then it transitions to a flat. Again, those fish can really go from shallow to deep in a hurry. Um, let's just change the water level here a little bit. You can see what I'm talking about. Really deep to really flat. That, that's just gonna be a good point. I don't care what time of the year it is, but a great point, you know, in January, because I would sit out here and I'd throw my jerk bait across this flat, you know, having it in six, eight feet of water dropping off to 20, 30 feet. I just, I think that's a neat spot to start if I ever had to pick a spot to start, that would be a good one. Let's change it up just a little bit more and let's go down the lake and, and, and look at some of these pockets. We picked out one spot here in a big major creek, but then another thing that I really like about this section of the lake, I could break it down really quick with these small pockets. You know, right here's a really neat example. So you've got main lake points, you've got a secondary point that I like. You know, one thing I liked about this pocket and, and why I put this marker is I've got one, two, three, four trees right out here in the middle. You know, when I took all the water out of this lake, you know, in this Google Earth photo, I can see just a few isolated trees right dead center of that pocket. So it'd be a great place to just sit right back here and throw over that timber, either with your jerk bait, your weedless type Alabama rig, you know, versus say, this, I've just got all kinds of timber in the back of this pocket. You know, there's just timber, 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 timber. Those are more isolated. I've got one tree right on that point and one tree right there. If you guys can see that stuff, that's isolated versus all this down through here. And it's just a great spot again for a bass. I can get up high in that tree when it's sunny, you know, warming up. You know, I always try to think of January, February, March, fish moving vertical. You'll notice those points we talked about in the back of that creek. They can move vertical very easily, you know, depth wise, uh, you know, later in the fall, I think about fish moving horizontally in the, in the spring and the winter. I think about vertical. They can just move up in the water column to warm up. They can move down in the water column really quick to uh, warm up wherever they're the most comfortable, wherever the bait is. These trees right here is a prime example of that. I think it's just a really neat high percentage spot in the back of that pocket that I could throw a jerk bait or Alabama rig or or you know even a jig you know down through that stuff so i would just venture around look at some of these smaller pockets I, I think this is a really cool spot i'm guessing this is a water tower i don't know you know i don't see any buoys keep saying keep off this but anytime you have a big concrete structure out in the water again it's a, a spot those fish can come up and down on that would be a great spot to start i could catch a fish off of that with a jerk bait or an Alabama rig or swimming a grub, you know, right now. Just looking on down through here, a couple more spots. Just any one of these, you've got main lake points that then I could fish back into that pocket, north wind blowing shad in, you know, pay attention to the wind. You know, if I've had three, four days of, of south wind, 
you know, fish these pockets in here, you know, just, it'll have that plankton, whatever blown in there, and it'll have those shad hemmed up in the back, you know, and, and if I go in there and I don't see shad, go to the next one. If, I, if you don't see shad, go to the next one. Go, you know, one of those down through there is gonna have shad in them, and if the wind's been blown out of the north, just take it right over here to the other side and fish the side that all that wind's been blowing in for multiple days. But uh, those are some areas to start on belt. And now let's go to the final lake here and uh, talk about it a little bit. All right, for the final lake, it's really unique, you know, and I just, I don't know, I just think it's a cool lake because it's brand new. Uh, Dennis Turner sent in Cedar Creek, Kentucky. So let's look at it right here on Google Earth. So when we look at the photo here, the latest photo, just a cool lake that actually flows to the north, which is kind of unique. We don't have a lot of lakes in the country that flow to the north. I don't know how big it is. It doesn't look overly big, but man, it has got all kinds of standing timber in it. But when I, when I look at this lake, you know, you can just see it's got cool boat ramps, looks like lots of boats. Great place to start, you know, and, and I guess we should probably talk about this lake maybe a little bit later in the year. I don't know how cold it gets up there, but man, a great place to start is going to be that riprap of, of that dam. I just, man, there's not a lot of riprap on this lake looking at it. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot of rocks on this lake. It looks to me like it's a fairly flatland type reservoir with all this farm ground around there. Uh, you know, you've got one bridge up here that's going to have a little bit of riprap, but there's not a lot of riprap on the lake, and that's always a great place to start. But back to what I think is the coolest thing on this lake. When I go right there, bam, look at this thing. There's no water in it. So you've got this old bridge right here in the middle of the lake. You've got a house foundation right there. You've got a road. So let me just show you again what I'm talking about. If I go back and forth. That bridge is right there. That house is somewhere right out in there. Let me go back to that photo before they ever had the lake there. You can just see, bam, there's a house, there's the road, you know. I did a video earlier um, loading Google Waypoints onto your unit. I did two videos. The second one, if you went back and watched that second one, you know, you could, you could just drop a waypoint right there on that house foundation, on that bridge. Um, and then load those units right into your depth finder. But, you know, I like the fact that, you know, I've got a pond dam right here. So that's going to be a little bit different, something of a place to look at, to idle across, to look at this road right here. Anytime I have a road, I don't care what time of the year it is, man, that, there is going to be fish on it somewhere or another. And it's really easy to fish because I can idle up and down that road, find an intersection where it crosses a, a creek, to me, that's just super, super cool. Let's just see what else. I, I have, okay, you got a road intersection. I got a, that looks like an old railroad right there to me. That is gonna be a railroad, I bet. It's an old railroad or a road. Again, you've got one right there, that, which is gonna stick up higher. That's kind of cool. Look at that outside creek bend right there. Um, that would be a great place, you know. Um, there's a boat ramp, you know, they've got the new boat ramp on it. There's a pond dam right there, right next to that road. Man, you just got so many different things to look at. You got this tree line with these corners and points. Just a cool, cool lake to be able to go back and look at something before there was ever water on it. I've got another tree line with a pond dam right there that might be really interesting. This outside bend right here, when you look at that outside bend, let's just see what that looks like. So that outside bend is right there. Let me go back to that photo and just see what we can take into it. So you've got this tree line, outside bend, you got a big house foundation right there. Um, man, I think there's got to be a rock pile right there. If you can see it, you can just barely see a house. You see a house there, a house there. I like that house because it's right next to that outside bend. It's gonna be up on higher ground. You're gonna have a big elevation change because they wouldn't have built the house in the floodplain. So it's gonna be up higher. Could be a super cool place. That's just right out in front of that boat ramp. Um, you've got this timber line. Uh, those fish could travel back into this pocket, you know, to spawn from, you know, the deeper water haunt out here. Um, I don't know. I just, I wanted to pick this lake. A viewer sent it in, and I just thought it was cool because you can just see it before the lake was ever there. And I just, I think that's really, really neat. All right, enough playing with that, looking at Google Earth before it was filled. You know, again, places to start. I would just focus on these secondary points, these main lake points, you know, kind of figure out, you know, anytime you've got a lake that, with a lot of standing timber, those fish are going to use that standing timber to move vertically in January, February. Um, I, I just feel like 
any of the miles of these pockets, you know, is going to be good. Any of these timber lines on a lake like this is going to be really, really good. You know, this lake's now 20 years old. Um, you know, that timber's still going to be a big, big player there. So, uh, man, I appreciate you sending that in. It's really neat to look at your lake, all the different stuff in it, the house foundations. It looks like a super cool lake. I, I would love to come fish that sometime. But, uh, oh, let's get to the winner. We got to get to the winner. The most important thing, the winner that we have is we randomly picked Mike Mann. He said, figuring out where to start to find them is no doubt the trickiest part. Thanks for sharing your experience and expertise with us. Mike, for leaving that comment and being a subscriber, you need to send me an email to my website, super simple, edwinevers.com with your address and uh, I will send you a, a, a battery certificate. You just won a uh, Optima battery of your choice. Really, really a cool gift. I hope it's uh, something that you need and you can put to great use. Thanks for leaving the comment. Thanks for being a, lo a loyal fan and subscriber. So with that said, guys, I want to wish everybody a great, great, you know, 2022. Hopefully this year you will catch your all time personal best. Hopefully this year you make some great, great memories with some family and friends out there on the water. And uh, man, I'm looking forward to getting the year started. Can't wait for everything to warm up for all of us to get out there and do a bunch of fishing. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, man, keep your line tight and set the hook hard. Thank you